Hey everyone, the name is Rick Dorn. and today's topic is INFJ Rage. And the, what caught me to make this video was a question I got from a co-worker and that question was, Eric, do you ever get angry? You know, I work in customer service and I get calls from upset customers all the time, but ultimately I'm never angry and I'm always at peace and I'm always calm and I'm always quiet and I'm always peaceful. I'm always searching for spiritual enlightenment. I'm searching for peace of mind, of stability, of control, of harmony. I'm always oriented towards that matter and I'm always disciplining my own emotions. I'm always pursuing and believing firmly in diplomacy. I'm always believing in utopias, in ideals, and in innocence, and in maintaining my innocence, maintaining my purity, maintaining my kindness towards myself and other people. So ultimately, this week I was put in a situation where everything in that in myself was questioned. Ultimately, I was cornered and put in a position where I almost gave up on all of it. You know, I didn't expect this. I didn't expect this mass transformation. I didn't expect it to happen so quickly. And I didn't, you know, think it would occur. I came basically out of nowhere. This INFJ rage came out of me out of nowhere. And I was not prepared for it. And I thought maybe this video could help you prepare for it and anticipate it and understand it better in yourself or in another INFJ that you've seen ultimately explode. There is a whole trope in the world that kindness is a weakness. It can be taken, it can be used, it can be manipulated. Other people can guilt trip you into being kind for them. Other people can use or manipulate your innocence. If you believe the best in everybody and in yourself, and if you forgive, other people will keep stepping on you, keep using you, keep putting you in the most shit of situations, sidelining you or putting you off while putting everyone else forward. There is a thought that anger and strength and aggression is what ultimately puts us forward in society. And people that will be aggressive and will speak up for themselves and will be tough and will slam the door on the table will be more likely to get what they want. Loyalty matters not. Ultimatums can get you far. The thought is, you know, a person who chooses not to compromise, chooses not to be fair, chooses not to be diplomatic, but decides to be selfish, will ultimately get further in the world than a person who decides to be selfless, so decides to be kind, decides to be fair. So INFJ anger, you can understand then, is something that will occur when the INFJ decides to ultimately give up on everything they hold dear, everything they believe in, everything they think is right. It's a complete disintegration of the INFJ's pure values and purest personality traits. It's the forsaking of self, it's the abandonment of self, it's the tossing out of self, out of the window. INFJ rage is unexpected in both yourself and in other people. You never expect it, you never anticipate it. Because you are so used to it. You're so used to INFJ forgiveness. You're so used to acceptance. And you're used to it getting there quickly. Out of nowhere. Fairly. Swiftly. Smoothly. I understand. That's okay. No problem. I can do it. I can take care of it. I'll be there. Okay, okay. I'll take handle it. I understand. No, I don't blame you. You know how it is, Uh, it can happen to anybody, you know. Yeah, I understand you can't make it, oh well, I'll take it myself. INFJs can ultimately be in all of this, in all of these acceptance situations, uh, sending out a message to other people, it's okay, you can keep doing it, you can do it whenever you want to, you can uh, keep making these mistakes, you can keep uh, pulling this on me over and over again. And nothing will come out of it. No damage, no problems, no harm will come out of it. You can keep using my kindness. You can keep exploiting my innocence. You can keep playing games with me and I won't note this and I won't hold you accountable for it. So INFJ rage is that uh, thing that occurs when the INFJ is ultimately cornered. Ultimately put in a situation 
where they can't hide from it anymore. They can't keep forgiving it anymore. They can't keep playing the game anymore. They can't keep accepting things anymore. They can't keep putting up with it anymore. Because they have realized it's never going to get them anywhere. They have faced the ultimate betrayal. They have faced the ultimate situation. Ultimate shit situation. Where... Nothing is gonna make things better. Nothing you do, no loyalty, no kindness, no forgiveness is going to get you anywhere. While up until this point you maybe believed that there was a chance for redemption, there was a chance that things would be fixed, that you would find harmony, that you would find peace and acceptance and forgiveness, and you would get there where you wanted to. You no longer believe. You no longer believe in anything. And you know... The rage does not come immediately from the INFJ. The thing is, the INFJ's rage always comes in hide- hindsight. You know, it's ultimately at first it's complete confusion. When the INFJ is cornered, it's confusion. It's I don't know where to go anymore. I don't know what to say anymore. I don't know what's right or wrong anymore. I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't know what to have hope in. I don't know what is right or wrong. I don't understand anymore. How this could happen. How we could get this like this. How this ultimately unfair situation could ever occur. The INFA themselves. They don't recognize or understand how they got where they ended up. So first they pull back. And they try frantically to find a way. Find a solution. Find something to say. Find a good word. Find a good uh, diplomacy or... Find a good way forward to find a new utopia or a way to their utopia to find a new way. But if there is no way, that's when the anger comes. If there is no way anymore, if the confusion, the frantic search doesn't lead you anywhere, that's when the rage comes. Ultimately, the INFJ in rage believes the ultimate injustice has occurred. They have been loyal, they have been supportive, they have been good, they have been kind, they have been generous, and they have been cared. They have cared very, very deeply about something, but then they have been sidelined. They've been pushed aside. They've been uh, forgotten, rejected. They've been uh, put in a situation where they feel unwanted or used, you know, where it's like, why did I put in all this energy in the first place? Why did I work so hard with this? Why was I so nice to begin with? Why was I so kind? Why did I forgive? Why did I accept this? Why didn't I speak up for myself sooner? Why didn't I say something? So ultimately, the INFJ rage is always channeled towards the tribe towards the system, towards the system at large, uh, and towards the most weak, the most weak points of society. Their thought is finding every weakness, finding every weakness they can exploit in the system, every bad thing they can say that they know will hurt, everything they know that will cause the most damage possible. The INFJ looks for and chooses the most pragmatic, the most strength requiring task possible often uh, the INFJ's rage puts them in a position of strength of calculation of tactical consideration and maneuvership of rash and rushed action and of attention demanding anger the INFJ has an attention demanding anger They have a rough and tough and pushy and aggressive anger. They have a tactical and calculated anger. And they have a rash and restless anger. They have this bottle up, quick surfacing, thoughtless, frenzied state of mind. Where they just put everything out there. Every resource they can have they put into this quick channeled source of anger. Everything they say, every argument is very, very thought out. Everything they choose to do, they they look exactly for where to punch where it will hurt the most. Look exactly for what to say that they know will offend the most. They look for exactly what to do that will 
show other people just how upset you are, just how angry you are, just how frustrated you are with the situation. Because the INFJ didn't reveal this immediately, it's even more confusing for other people. Because of the INFJ's initial confusion and tendency to pull back, the INFJ's anger shows up maybe hours later, maybe a day later, maybe a week after, when the other person has even forgotten it happened in the first place. The other person has no idea why or what brought on this action. The other person will have no idea where it's coming from or why it's being said or why it's said like this. Why is the other person, why is the INFJ trying to be so hurtful? Why are they trying to be so aggressive? Why are they so in rushed? Why are they so intense? All of a sudden, what's happening? Where is this all coming from? While other types like, for example, the ENFP has a very, very rational, calculated, strategic anger. The INFJ has an ultimately Hulk-like, berserk anger. An anger that ultimately leaves vast destruction around them, <laughs> everywhere they go. And ultimately it's the kind of anger that will leave the INFJ deeply ashamed of themselves. After this complete disintegration, after this, the INFJ will feel like a complete failure. They will feel that they have given up everything they cared for, their ethics, their integrity, their feelings of justice and what they think is fair and what they think is right and what they think is kind. All that has been given up and the INFJ will ultimately feel very, very guilty for this, will feel very, very afraid of themselves, will feel upset with themselves, will feel confused with themselves for all that has occurred, for how it could happen, for why they would do it, and why they would do it like this. The INFJ off the rage is uh, put in a position where they ultimately have to confront their own negative feelings earlier. They have to stand up for themselves sooner. They have to recognize for themselves earlier what it is they want, what they are searching for, what is important to them. As an INFJ, you're ultimately forced to rewrite your diplomacy and your code of conduct to where you allow and tolerate in yourself the right to speak up for yourself. You have to ultimately rewrite your utopia and your naive innocence and you have to find a new utopia, a new possession of innocence, a new ethical principle, a new belief system, a new understanding of self and of other that will be more honestly forgiving, more authentically forgiving, more real. This uh, point of disintegration can show when you as an INFJ the fallacies of being an INFJ and the issues of being an INFJ and can help you reach the next level of being an INFJ and can show you where you can correct yourself, where you can adjust yourself, where you can change yourself to get further on. This can also put you in a situation where you ultimately make important changes and decisions in your life. Perhaps you change a job because you've ultimately never gotten promoted, you've ultimately always been sidelined, you've ultimately never gotten considered for a bonus or for a higher salary. Perhaps you choose to get a new group of friends because in this group of friends your kindness has always been used and other people have never really been there for you and you have never really felt welcome. Perhaps uh, you decide to move to a different place or to go and try something new or change your education because you recognize that, yeah, something has to change. Or perhaps you learn after this to swallow your shame and your guilt in where you are and what you've done and you decide to find a new way, a new way to speak up to your friends and to ask for help, to ask for support and to ask for a more real and more deep friendship. Perhaps you will swallow your fear of speaking up for yourself, your fear of uh, standing up and you will go out to your boss and you will say, hey, I really need this. Uh, this is very important to me. I care a lot about this and I deserve this. And hopefully this will lead to no matter what route you choose to something better than what was. 
every personality type will ultimately get angry. Everyone gets angry about something. Everyone gets afraid of something. Everyone has something that they struggle with or feel anxious about. Every personality type has a disintegration in which they become the ultimate reverse of themselves. I've seen uh, ENFPs turn completely cold. I've seen INFJs turn completely reckless. I've seen ENTJs turn into personal uh, victims. I've seen INFPs turn to steam... Uh, what do you call it? Steamrollers that will destroy, liberate everything in their path. And I've seen these ultimate shifts and uh, they have taught me a lot about flow and they've taught me a lot about stress and they've taught me a lot about being real with yourself, listening to yourself and honoring yourself. Ultimately, these things should never happen and we should seek to stop them before they do. But we should not stop them. We should not just stop them. We should address them. We should recognize them. We should recognize that if this happens, if this is ultimately not going to work out, I need a backup plan. I need another strategy. I need another way. And ultimately, my current way might not be good enough. So I hope this video helped you understand in yourself your own struggles with anger. And hopefully it also helps you understand your own quest for peace. It's an aggression of uh, a lack of awareness of other and of self. You know, as INFJs, your search is for spiritual enlightenment, for understanding of self and of other. That's where you're headed. And um, anger is the ultimate betrayal of that. So it's where you don't want to go. But anger is also a healthy sign of the times, of where you are right now. It's just a healthy signal that something is wrong, something has to change, something is not working out. So long term, I see myself moving towards the position where I will never be angry again. Where I will have true peace, where I will have true acceptance. But in the short term, I recognize that anger is healthy and necessary. I know that I will never fully understand everything. I will never fully be able to accept everything. I will not be able to put up with just anything. I will not be perfect. I will not be Buddha. I will not be Jesus. It's not possible. It's not going to happen. Thanks everyone for watching this video and hope to see you all in the next